I'm going to show you a few things now that you can do to analyze the training samples that you've selected using the training sample manager in this land cover classification activity. If you look here, we have the training sample manager and I've finished my 14 samples here and I have them named uh, appropriately and you know I can I can examine them you can see the sizes of them so some of them may be a little small these are numbers of pixels that fall within the polygons and so ultimately the training samples that you selected that you can see out here in the uh, you know in the image very small polygons in most cases are used to punch through all six channels which cover the visible and infrared spectrum and to produce a rough, rather coarse signature for each of these different types of land cover that we're trying to analyze. Okay, So now that we have our training samples where we think we want them, we want to make sure that that's what we have. We want to make sure that we have good training samples. So we have a few tools here in the training sample manager that we can use to analyze these. These include a histogram tool, a scatter plot tool, and then a simple statistics tool, okay, before we make our, our signature file. So first let's look at the histogram tool. If I select the histogram tool, you can see I've selected the water uh, one land cover. And when I select the histogram tool, it pops open a histogram window over here. And so you can see I've got just this one kind of real skinny, narrow uh, histogram. And if I uh, depress control I can select there's water 2 you see the histogram for the water 2 sample pop in and there's water 3 you see a much smaller histogram for water 3 pop in so again uh, you know this is very useful you can see how this is channel 1 channel 2 channel 3 channel 4 and as you get over as you're in the visible you can see they're easily separated when you get over into the infrared channel 4 channel 5 and 6, then there's a lot of overlap. They're pretty much all very dark. They're not reflective at all in the, in the uh, uh, near and mid infrared. So this is, this is a great tool for analyzing these. Just here's a, another example of how this can be helpful, right? Here are the ag channels. So there's ag 1, ag 2, and AG3. So AG3 you can see is a very small sample. One and two is a much uh, much larger or a substantially larger sample. And so, but you can see in the visible these these channels are um, fairly close together, slightly separated. As you get into the infrared, there's a little better separation there. Again, so this is where you 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 really start to analyze these training samples and these are training samples that you've created right so you're the analyst here this is where you become an analyst in uh, remote sensing this is where for me at least in this class you become a remote sensing analyst um, and so here's another tool this is uh, rather interesting and you can you can pop that pop this uh, histogram tool close you can see it's right here on the uh, on the side for us, but we can have it slide over and it's still available to us. Um, the scatter plot tool, again, very useful. I'm looking at the three ag samples here still. Let's look at just one. Here is ag one. You can see when you look at these, they're fairly um, spread out. and You can see the range. This is the histogram. Uh, these are the histograms between channel one and the other five channels. So one and two, one and three, one and four, one and five. So these are two channel histograms, each of them. It gives you a, a nice view of a single, uh, a single type of land cover, each of these dots being a single pixel in that sample file. Now, we can compare as many as we want. Let's compare all of the ag channels, okay? So there's ag one and ag two, and you can begin to see again the clusters of these scatter plots. It looks a lot like some of the things we've seen in our text, right? Look at how these uh, separate. Like here's one type of agriculture, here's another type of agriculture. These are going to be easily separated by just about any classifier, right? Very, uh, very interesting. And then also you may see some uh, land covers with um, this tool that begin to overlap. Let's look at, here's heavy industry. These are relatively large samples. Here's 
um, light industry. Okay, so you can see the light industry is back behind it, behind the heavy industry, and covered up somewhat. Uh, so there's a lot of overlap there between these two. It's going to be difficult separating these, both in the visible and in the uh, in the near infrared. As you look at it, there is a lot of overlap there. So maybe we didn't do such a good job. We, that's me, myself, and I, didn't do such a good job selecting these channels. Here's another one. We'll add another one in there. It kind of shows you a nice contrast. Here's commercial retail. But again, uh, commercial retail um, shown in the red there in the scatter plot uh, is... Um, overlapping quite a lot the uh, heavy industry and light industry so commercial in, commercial retail in the training samples that I've selected looks an awful lot like light industry and heavy industry so you know again this is something that um, you know something that is very useful to you for analyzing the training samples that you've selected uh, and you need to use it use it wisely and use it well and there also is a simple statistics tool here as well. I'll slide this one back so that it's out of the way. And there is a simple statistics tool that's really nice uh, that you know that allows you to uh, allows you to see a, st a statistical summary for each channel. Here are the here are the statistics, and so you can see um, you know for uh, for each type of land cover a statistical summary of the training samples. These are just those little samples that you selected. And you can see some of them, this one goes up to 1,500 pixels, but some of them are fairly small, maybe too small, right? Here's one that's thir only 13 pixels. That's not probably not going to work uh, being that small. Individual pixels can have a great impact on the statistics and the scatter plots and so on that the the parameters that are derived from these training samples to do the classification of the image. So you need to use this and use it well. And ultimately, I mean, in here, we don't have that much time, but we do have some time to do this. And so if you see problems with a particular training sample from what you understand about histograms, from what you understand of how this process works, you probably want to go back and, and edit your training samples. You want to go back in and maybe, um, you know, continue to, uh, uh, add perhaps additional sites or or get rid of a particular training sample and try another one put another one in there and you can you can put it in you can move it around put it in the order that you want it with the training sample manager a really nice interface for creating and managing training samples so use this use this and become an analyst become a remote sensing analyst over the next couple of weeks